All right, welcome back everyone. So for the last talking session, there's Thomas. Please take it away. Hi there, my name's Tom. I'm gonna to talk to you about how I'm using Julia in my research into probabilistic long course route modeling for sailing craft. So I'm a naval architect. This means that I have to have a sort of appreciation of a wide range of problems in engineering and then be able to rapidly solve a series of problems in order to give some insight into the problem I actually care about, which in this case is uh, sailing craft routing. So this is what a sailing craft looks like. The fundamental principle of it is, is that you've got the sails, which can be thought of as a wing, which generate lift, which enables the boat to go forwards. Uh, the sails are supported by the rig, which needs to be strong enough to support the force being generated by the sails. And this is all mounted onto the hull, which uh, is in the water, and that generates its own lift force when it's moving through the water. So it's kind of quite a multidisciplinary problem because you've got to get the structure right, you've got to get the sail design right, and uh, you want to make sure it, it suits each other. So what I'm actually interested in is I'm actually interested in identifying the right route for it to take, so optimizing the route. So the research question is really, how can I improve the accuracy of sailing craft routing through considering stochastic factors using Julia? So I'm going to talk about the routing algorithm I've, to I've chosen, as well as, uh, well, not sailing craft performance, uh, not enough time, uh, the reliability, so the reliability of an engineering artifact is quite important because it's uh, the probability that the structure is able, able to survive the loads being imposed on it. So clearly if it's not strong enough, it's going to break and uh, it's quite an important thing to get right. Uh, another thing which is important in sailing craft routing is the weather. Uh, if there's no wind, then we're not going to be able to go sailing. Uh, so got to know about that. So. Fundamentally, the routing algorithm is optimizing the route to take between point, two points. And because I'm looking at uh, including extra things in it, I need an algorithm which is accurate rather than fast. Because this is the kind of ruler that I'm using to measure the influence of the stochastic factors that I'm including. So I'm going to need to make sure that any inaccuracy is due to the stochastic factors rather than the behavior of the routing algorithm. Um, and I've got to be able, it's got to be flexible in order to be able to model the particular things of how you actually go about sailing a sailing craft. So this is the image of a track of a sailing craft sailing downwind and then upwind, and you can see that it actually requires it sails in different ways. Uh, so I've got to be able to do that. So the algorithm I chose was a very simple one. It was a forward-looking dynamic program uh, implementation, which identifies the right route to take through checking all the routes that can be taken. So it's not an optimal algorithm by any means, but it means that the uh, actual, it means that you know what the optimum route to take is because um, it's checked all the other solutions. And any inaccuracy is due to the discretization of the environment rather than any sort of algorithmic behavior. So flexible, but expensive. So it's flexible because it's so simple. And what I'm working on is improving the cost function of the algorithm. Um, so yeah, very expensive. Uh, I also coded it in Python, and unsurprisingly, Julia was faster than Python. So the practical implication for me was that it was about six times more accurate for the sort of computational runtime. So that was great. Uh, here's an example of some uh, different routes that are taken given stochastic weather conditions. And so it's not come up particularly well on the, the screen, but you can see that it's modeling different routes that can be taken in the domain, which is useful when you're actually racing because you can test different hypotheses you have around the behavior of the wind and then you can go to different parts of the domain, um, which is quite useful. So reliability is the uh, study of how, whether the boat will survive the uh, forces being exerted on it. So simply put, it's about how fast can we go without breaking the boat. So you want to optimize the reliability, but you also uh, want to be able to survive. So this is an example of when it all went wrong, and that was particularly sad. Um, so to start dealing with this, I coded a physics-based reliability model in Julia, uh, which was uh, about of the rig. So it's about modeling the forces being exerted on the sail and the strength of the rig. And then the principle is you identify when they balance, and then you can start to calculate how, much, how strong the rig needs to be and how much wind would break it. Um, so I was able to run some Monte Carlo simulations in order to predict the probability of failure for different wind conditions. So this is a polar plot, and that shows the speed that a sailing craft can sail at for a given wind condition. So the red dots show the maximum speed you can go at. And then so what I was able to do was I was able to incrementally increase the speed until the rig failed. Um, and then this was how I was able to predict the probability of failure. Um, and we can see that the black part is where you don't really want to go 
Um, so when you're going downwind, and we can see that that was another moment that I had, which is also particularly disappointing. Weather is key because weather really drives everything else going on in the modeling process. So this is a, a, tr a, a trace of the wind recorded by a staining yacht. We can see that there's a kind of a wind, there's a, a trend going on with the wind direction and the wind speed. And so, because I wanted to have some sort of control weather, which I knew what was kind of going on with, I generated a simple wind model uh, using a Wiener process. And this is the uh, weather vector, the UNV components. But I kind of, I've got a problem now because I've got a really expensive cost function, which I can't paralyze very well. Um, and I've also got a whole range of stochastic performance I want to simulate, a whole range of stochastic reliability conditions I want to simulate. But I now hold all these weather scenarios too. So I was I'm like, how do I go about reducing the number of simulations? So the problem is, how do I reduce the original scenario set to a sort of a manageable number? And so if I start by discretizing the wind speed scenario, uh, I can then use the earth mover's distance in order to identify the most similar scenario in the scenario set and then um, remove that. Because the, the idea is you don't need to simul simulate one scenario if it's already very similar to another one. Uh, so I formulated this as a uh, linear optimization problem using jump. Um, and so the earth mover's distance is the cost of turning one probability distribution into another one. And I think it's very commonly used, uh, just not in, in this field. And so this is an example of uh, the including stochastic weather and performance. So as the distance increases, uh, we can see that the uh, predicted time of arrival fans out. And so the idea here is we're not necessarily trying to give people point estimates. We're just saying, we believe that it's more likely for you to arrive in this time interval rather than just you're going to arrive in two weeks. Um, no one's going to believe that. So to conclude, Julia has allowed me to easily write fast code to solve problems in a range of areas. Um, I've been able to utilize multiple simulations to add credibility to routing predictions. In the future, I want to improve the reliability model to include performance limitations and human aspects. I also want to use Bayes in estimation to quantify how well the, the statistics of the reduced scenario set summarizes the original scenario set. And I want to apply the scenario reduction method to recorded spatiotemporal weather conditions. Uh, so far, I'm summarizing it on my GitHub page in various different packages. Uh, thanks for your time. All right, thank you. Um, so are there any questions for the speaker? Oh, there we go. Let's see if I can actually reach. Uh, so when you make these models, uh, and uh, are you trying to analyze if you're optimizing a specific route for a specific time you're going to sail, or is it more looking at sailing in general? Uh, so it's applied to offshore races. So you've got a design, you've got some ideas about how it might fail. Um, and then you have some ideas about what sort of weather scenarios you're going to come up with. And it's about being able to go, is that design suitable? Is it going to break or not? And so I've been able to use Julia to identify, uh, to model the reliability, but also to identify like, the right uh, scenarios to use for that particular route. Uh, the uh, picture of the boats, those are the type of boats that you were doing uh, for the simulation? Uh, right, so the thing about this analysis is it's kind of independent to some degree on the actual boat you're looking at. So the uh, stochastic prediction of the boat's performance um, is kind of a data file which you might input, and so that modeling would take place and that would contribute to your uh, hypothesis about its sort of failure conditions. Uh, but um, it's kind of independent, so it could be for that boat. Uh, but it's more for offshore racing yachts. Okay, so uh, can you model uh, right now, uh, uh, say, uh, changes in head sail, yeah. design, stuff like that, yeah? Yeah. Okay, great. Hi. Uh, so so you spoke about uh, some physics-based reliability, reliability models that you made. Yeah. Uh, could you just uh, 
just go about what kind of ta uh, things that you take into consideration while making those? Okay, so the reliability model, so there's, I've, I've had two ways of modeling this so far. So one way I experimented with was using a Bayes and belief network, and that kind of used different input factors, and you've got like a probability distribution about what might happen there. Um, and then the other way is using um, Monte Carlo simulations in order to simulate the parameters of different dimensions of the mast and the wind, and then be able to identify a point where... Um, so it's kind of an iterative solver in that respect. So you, you're increasing the speed of the boat and then you're identifying the points at which the equations balance. So you have to use, uh, you've got like 10,000 samples and simulate uh, and then iteratively change things until things converge. So two different ways there. I've not spoken about it in great detail in this. There's another question back here. Um, sorry, uh, I see you're using mostly wind data right now, uh, are you yeah, also using so current data? Current uh, data, yeah, yeah, so that's in here, I've just left it out because okay. it kind yeah. of add one thing at a time, yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, current yeah. is no, pretty it, important. It need, because uh, the company where I uh, work, uh, they actually helped in the Olympics uh, and like to predict the, the, the current. Oh, cool. Uh, to also better optimize uh, the sailing. <coughs> yeah. It, it, it's none of our core business, but we do a lot of hydrodynamics. And oh, cool. It was kind of cool, like, file that. Yeah, that. I'll definitely talk to you afterwards. Yeah, cool. Let's see. Do we have a little bit of time? Um, any further questions for the speaker? All right, if not, let's thank the speaker again, and this will be the end of the session.